four easy steps to memorize the note names on a guitar. Before starting on the four steps, you need to know the absolute basics of note naming. The notes are named from A to G, and these note names are simply repeated where necessary. For example, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, etc. The first slight complication that needs to be remembered is that the gaps between the notes aren't all uniform. The B and C and the E and F are closer than all the other notes. Or, to put it another way, what's actually going on is there's a tone gap between each of the notes except B and C where there's a semitone and E and F where there's another semitone. So, looking at this on the neck of a guitar, you can see there's a gap between A and B, C and D, D and E, F and G, and G and A. This is a universal musical pattern, and it can be seen most clearly on a keyboard or a piano. The familiar pattern on any piano or keyboard of black and white keys arises as a direct result of the distribution of the notes. Notice on a keyboard how the E and the F and the B and the C don't have a black note between them, whereas all the other notes that have an extra semitone between them have a black note. So to simplify all this, you need to remember the notes E and F and B and C are always right next to each other. There's no empty fret between them. Step one in learning the names of the notes on a guitar is to learn the names of the open strings. The name of the open strings going from thickest to thinnest are E, A, D, G, B and E. And you can remember these by using a simple saying. Here are three. Every angry dog growls and bites eventually. Or Eddie ate dynamite good by Eddie. Or elephants and dogs God blesses everything. When memorising the names of the open strings, you're also memorising the names of the notes on the 12th fret. This is why many guitars have a double dot or an accented marker on the 12th fret, because it's an octave above the open strings. I'll explain octaves later in this tutorial. The next step is to memorise the name of the notes on the bottom E string. Even if you don't want to learn to read music, or don't want to study theory, it's important that you know the names of these notes. E-shaped bar chords and many of the scales get their names from the bottom E string. By learning the names of the notes on the bottom E string, you're also learning the name of the notes on the top E string. So now you've mastered the names on two strings of your guitar. The next step is to memorise the name of the notes on the A string. This is the last string you need to memorise the name of the notes on but it's also an important one for other reasons other than reading music and theory. Once you've memorised the names of the open strings and the names of the notes on the E string and the A string, you know half of the notes on the guitar, and the rest can be worked out using octaves. An octave is the name given to the gap or the interval between two notes with the same name. So you can have an octave up or an octave down. An octave occurs then anywhere the note repeats itself, for example from A to A. It's also common to refer to multiple octaves, for example if the A repeats twice then you have a two octave gap or interval. If you prefer to think about this in a technical or scientific way, the octave is the point at which the frequency doubles or halves. So if you were to take a fixed note or frequency as a reference note, an octave up from this would be double the frequency, and an octave down from this would be half the frequency. And every time you doubled or halved the frequency from the new points, it would be up or down another octave respectively. From what you've learnt already, that is the open strings, the E string and the A string notes, we can find all these other notes using octaves. And to do this, all you need to do is remember a pattern, 
that is 2-2 two, two. or 2 strings up, 2 frets up. What this means in practical terms is if you take any of the notes you've learnt so far and then go 2 strings up, 2 frets up from that point the note repeats an octave up. For example here the G which is the 3rd fret on the bottom E string repeats an octave up which is the 5th fret on the D string. And this rule is true of any of the notes on the bottom E string. Two strings up, two frets up will always produce the octave up. And when this is applied it means now you know nearly all the notes on the D string without having to memorise them. And because this rule applies to the A string you know nearly all the notes on the G string. The pattern doesn't have to stop here however, we can take it up another octave to learn the names of most of the notes on the B string. To do this we have to learn a second pattern which goes from our second octave which is 2 strings up, 3 frets up. So for example from our original G in the 3rd fret of the bottom E string we found 1 G an octave up in the 5th fret of the D string and a second G 2 octaves up on the 8th fret of the B string. This pattern also works from the A string, so you can use it to confirm any of the notes on the top E string that you're not 100% sure of. To summarise then, the four steps are Step 1. Learn the names of the open strings Step 2. Learn the names of the notes on the bottom E string Step 3. Learn the name of the notes on the A string and Step 4. Learn the octave patterns by following these four steps you'll know all these notes and more.